When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers! Pizza! Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is, we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to Metro PCS. Stop by Metro PCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require reporting of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Nonprofit U. This is a forum where nonprofit stakeholders can share lessons learned and discuss the latest developments in the industry. My name is Valerie Lynn as your host, and I'm a consultant to nonprofits where I specialize in community and organizational development. I also work with nonprofit organizations to help them make a stronger impact to their clients and communities. You can find Nonprofit U on Facebook and Twitter, and I encourage you to comment early and often the Chicago way using the hashtags Nonprofit U, LISC, or Nonprofit Communications. You can also make comments on blogtalkradio.com forward slash nonprofit underscore you. And the chat room is open. You can post comments and questions. And in order to use the chat room, you have to open a listener-only account, and you'll find a link to open the account on the episode page as well as some instructions. You can also email me questions at consulting at valerieflinert.com or send messages through Facebook and Twitter. And you can find a Nonprofit U fan page on Facebook, and the Twitter account is at Nonprofit U. We'll be taking questions by phone and from our chat room at about the 20-minute mark. And the call-in number is 347-884-8121. And if you're listening and looking at your computer at the same time, that number will be at the top of your screen. Again, the number is 347-884-8121. Today's episode is Communicating on Purpose. We'll discuss ways that nonprofits can align their communication strategies with their mission, their goals, and their objectives. And we'll also explore low-cost strategies nonprofit organizations can use to get their message out, not only get the message out, but get it out with impact. Again, we encourage you to call in with questions and participate in live chat at about the 20-minute mark. The call-in number is 347-884-8121. Nonprofit professionals, educators, and community stakeholders are especially encouraged to call in and share your stories. Our guest for today is Ashley Whalen. Ashley is the Communications Officer at the Local Initiative Support Corporation, or as we know, LISC, and she's in the Chicago office, and we call them LISC Chicago. LISC is what we call an intermediary, and they work with emerging nonprofits to help them get the resources that they need to build their own capacity while strengthening their local communities. Ashley specializes in public relations, strategic communications and media relations, and she provides corporate communications, crisis communications, strategic planning, special events, and earned media support. Ashley has an extensive network of relationships with local, regional, national, and trade media, and this includes reporters, editors, producers, and various media outlets. So this could include print, broadcast, and online outlets, and and quite honestly, the list is so extensive I had to cut it down, but she has secured press coverage for clients in such high-profile media outlets as the Today Show, BBC World News, Fox Business, Associated Press, Chicago Tribune, Crane Chicago Business, Chicago Sun-Times, and the list goes on. And, you know, she's also, you know, very knowledgeable about the local community uh, stations, um, the print media as well as TV, radio, and daily newspapers and other online media outlets. So clearly we are speaking with someone who has extensive experience, you know, not only in media, but she also understands nonprofits. She works with the list which is a nonprofit organization, but she also serves on the board of directors 
for the Publicity Club of Chicago, and she serves as their chair of communications, um, the, um, the chair of the communications committee, and she's the co-chair of the programs committee. So she understands fully what we're going through as nonprofits in addition to having expertise in communications. So thanks for being on the nonprofit you show today, Ashley. It's indeed an honor to have you. Can you tell us a little bit about List Chicago and how you came to work there? Uh, absolutely, and thanks so much for having me, Valerie. I'm excited to talk with you today. Um, so as you mentioned, List Chicago uh, is a nonprofit. It's a national nonprofit. Uh, it stands for Local Initiative Support Corporation. We are headquartered mm-hmm. in New York, and we have offices throughout the country, including here in Chicago where I'm based. And simply put, we support local initiatives. So our mission is to connect neighborhoods to the resources that they need to become stronger and healthier. And our goal is simple, to make Chicago a stronger city. Um, We work citywide and neighborhood deep, and we invest in people, places, programs, and partners. Um, LISC Chicago is actually a client of mine for a little over two years. I used to work at an agency, and it was one of many clients, and I just love the work that they did. And when there was an opportunity for me to come internal, it was something that I could not pass up. Oh, awesome, awesome. So I noticed that you specialize in public relations as well as strategic communications and media relations. Can you tell us what the difference is between the three? I know I tend to bleed them all together, and that might not be the most accurate way to do it, but you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one. And while you, <laughs> and, it, and it probably makes you cringe because you know the difference, right? No, and I I understand exactly what you're saying. <laughs> and, and, and while you're at it, can you explain the difference between marketing and communications? And you know, me as a business major, um, it you know, marketing and communications may be one thing, and then you know, you as a purely uh, media and communications professional, it may mean something slightly different, but still similar. But can you just share with us, you know, from your professional perspective, what the differences are? Sure. Um, so I feel like these all kind of go hand in hand and really are a part mm-hmm. of a comprehensive communication strategy. Um, mm-hmm. I think with public relations, which is also known in the industry as PR uh, for short, it, it's really the practice of managing information between an individual or an organization, such as a nonprofit, and the public. Mm-hmm. Um it's about mm-hmm. maintaining a positive relationship between the nonprofit and the general public. And one way you okay. can do this is through media relations. Um, so media relations is a component of public relations. Uh, media relations is working with the media, so newspapers, radio, TV, uh, to secure positive mm-hmm. coverage on your organization. Uh, you can also okay. refer to it as earned media, uh, mm-hmm. which basically means you don't pay for it. Uh, and that's typical in a lot of marketing and advertising campaigns that you see. Uh, rather, mm-hmm. with media relations, you are working closely to first build and then establish relationships with reporters, producers, editors, and the end result, hopefully, is a really great story on your nonprofit. Um, I think we'll probably talk a little bit more about how to do this and the best ways to work with mm-hmm. media uh, in a few minutes. So okay. let me move on to uh, strategic communications, which – really has become uh, a more popular term, I would say, over the last decade. Uh, A lot of Mm -hmm. PR agencies will say they do strategic communications. It basically means uh, infusing communications efforts with an agenda or a master plan. Uh, Typically, that master plan involves promoting the brand of an organization or a nonprofit and urging Mm -hmm. their audience to do a specific action. So there's a call to action, such as advocating for particular legislation. Um, And that's how really I think about strategic communications. Mm -hmm. Uh, Marketing communications, they can be very similar. Uh, I I do think a lot of people now use the words interchangeably. Um, But, again, I I think they're different, and I think the biggest difference is from marketing, you are often paying for results. Um, And public relations, it's it's communicating with your public, your audience. It's something you should be doing every day, and you're Mm -hmm. you're not paying for those results. Okay. I got you. Thank you so much. I I just want to acknowledge that we have two guests in the chat room. One guest I 
don't know his or her name, but I do want to acknowledge Marcus Tab Sr. Um, Marcus and I grew up, <laughs> he might be embarrassed for me to say this, <laughs> we're, we're 25 years old, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, we grew up together. Now, we're, we're a little bit older than 25, but we <laughs> have known each other since um, grammar school. And Marcus is a minister up on the north side, and he is learning as much as he can about community development and trying to get a better feel for um, this line of work so he can actually be a more effective pastor of his church. So I, I just want to welcome Marcus. So um, I want to talk now about the board of directors' role in communications. Uh, What are some of the elements of a good communications policy for the board as well as the staff? I think this role varies depending on the nonprofit or the organization. Uh, Some boards are really hands-on, while others are more hands-off. In my opinion, when it comes to the board of directors and their role in communications, uh, it's really to serve as an ambassador for that nonprofit, as another spokesperson mm-hmm. um, for the nonprofit. They mm-hmm. um, they should be kind of carrying your message and sharing it with their networks. They should know your message in and out, your goals, your vision, your mission, and be sharing that um, with all of mm-hmm. their audiences. I think important elements of a good communications policy for uh, a board and staff is to know what those key messages are and the goals of the nonprofit and to be able to communicate that effectively. I think that's really key. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to communicate the messaging effectively. Everyone on the staff should be able to do that and everyone on the board should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the ways that you would suggest that people get on the same page? Is there someone you think that should be designated to give an orientation or training and, and all that good stuff? I think if you have someone that's able to do that, it's really helpful. Um, You know, one of the Mm -hmm. things that I've done here is uh, a media training for all of our staff because everyone does talk to the media, um, or the majority of our staff does, and some of our board does. So we've done message trainings and we've done media trainings. And um, those kind of vary, but it's usually about a half a day, and it goes Mm -hmm. from kind of giving an overall presentation about how to work with the media, how to talk to the media, um, how to do Mm -hmm. interviews, how to feel comfortable, and then some Mm -hmm. actual mock interviews with a camera that we video record and we ask questions that the media would ask, and then we show you and we can Mm -hmm. kind of review together your answers and your body language, which is also important when you're doing TV, (laughs) um, and kind of take a step back and, you know, um, review together. And it's really good practice, and it helps people feel really comfortable when they are talking to the media or maybe when they're Mm -hmm. talking to an important funder and they want to make sure they understand, you know, what their message is, what their goal is, why they should support that organization. Oh, that is awesome. It, it's scary. I hate to watch <laughs> myself uh, on film. I hate to listen to myself. But, you know, you're right. The only way you know how you appear is, is actually to, to listen and, and to watch. It really is. And and the mm-hmm. nonverbal communication that you use, um, that's important. I think sometimes you forget about it. If you're at a sit-down interview, um, let's say you're at WGN Studios, you know, sitting up straight, the outfit that you wear, mm-hmm how slow or quickly you talk, all of that really comes into play, and I don't think you really think mm-hmm. about that until you're in the moment. Mm-hmm. So if you practice, it really does help, and it helps you feel more comfortable too. Oh, wow. Oh, that, that's great stuff. So if you ever do a training, you got to let us know and we <laughs> get, the, get the word out. I, I think folks in the community should know, and, I, and I'm not trying to commit you to that either, but if you ever do that, I, I realize that you've got your hands full you know, with all the community, you know, all the community development work that LIFT does and all of their, you know, different organizations that they're dealing with. But if you ever do, just let us know and and we we will share the word and hopefully try to get out there. Absolutely. So when we look at the elements of a nonprofit communications plan, what would you say are some of the key components that need to be in the plan? You know, I think a good nonprofit communications plan should include media relations, social media, mm-hmm. um, strong messaging, and then a strategy to communicate those messages to your key audience. Um, mm-hmm. I think for nonprofits, you know, 
they're often thinking about their budget. And I think uh, some of the more low-cost strategies with the highest impact really are media relations and social media. I think these are two things that any nonprofit can do. Um, it, It does take some time, and it definitely takes patience and persistence, but I think it's well worth it in the long time, long run, and I think the results um, really show that. Mm-hmm. So I think I think mm-hmm. speak a little bit more on kind of the elements. I would say mm-hmm. you know all nonprofits should kind of really start by thinking about your audience: um, is funders, elected officials, businesses, local organizations, other nonprofits, the media, the neighborhood, whoever your audience is, and taking some time to do a little bit of research. Um, are these audiences on social media? Are they on Twitter? Are they on Facebook? Are they on Instagram, where a lot of our millennials are, and that's where they're getting their news? Um, find out where they are and how active and engaged they are. And um, I- I'm assuming that they are on at least one of these social media outlets. Um, I would mm-hmm. start there, and I would start building your social media profile and following and engaging with your audiences and sharing your messages via your social media channels, sharing your story through these platforms. Um it's in real time, and people are there, and that's where they're getting their news. And I think now more than ever, um, unfortunately, it's, it's time-consuming, but it's important to be on social media. Um, and it does mm-hmm. take time, and it takes some effort, but then it kind of becomes second nature, like checking your emails every morning or a daily staff meeting. It really does become a part of your routine. Mm-hmm. So that's I think good. that's where okay. I would start. Yeah. And that, that's really interesting. So since we're talking about social media, and Twitter. What's the importance of hashtags? Why do we care about hashtags? <laughs> well, hashtags really filter conversations. So, you know, on Twitter, I think the ultimate goal is to get something to trend. Um, one example I can give you is we recently had the Chicago Neighborhood Development Awards. And so That's how we monitor – thank you, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Um, it was a great it was a great event, and it was a great time celebrating all of Chicago's neighborhoods. Um mm-hmm. But we used hashtag CNDA22, and that was a way for people to communicate with us and to share their news during the event, leading up to the event and after the event, and a way for us to monitor how many people were talking about it. Um, So if you use a hashtag, you can really see who's talking about your event or your initiative, your project, your program. Um, You can monitor that, and then you can also engage by going and checking that Mm -hmm. hashtag and responding to those that are are using it. And I think that's why Mm -hmm. people are using it nowadays. And some people just use it just because it's fun, but I think that's the important part when you're using it for Mm -hmm. communications and for your nonprofit. Okay, I gotcha. So it sounds to me like you guys are doing performance management. You're actually monitoring this stuff, benchmarking, and seeing how impactful your message is, right? That's exactly. Like. Exactly. But, okay, so I just want to remind people that um, you are listening to Nonprofit You. The call in number is 347 884 8121. Our guest today is Ashley Whalen. She is communications officer with LISC Chicago. She is sharing some really, really valuable information, and I really do thank you for your time and cutting our heads open with this expertise. And that brings me to the next question. Um, what is earned media? I know you touched on it a little bit, but what are some of the strategies that you would recommend so that we can get earned media, so that we're not paying for, you know, advertising all the time. And then one of the things I've learned um, is that nobody really cares about whether or not you're having a dinner, an, an annual dinner. They say that that's not news. So what is news <laughs> and how do you – but, but yeah, you read and you see dinners, you know, covered. So, so what are some of the strategies that you can use to – make things that, one, seem like they're not news, be news, and then how do you make news? (laughs) That's a great question. Um, (laughs) So earned media is when you get media coverage and you don't pay for it. Um, I think I mentioned that earlier. And it's also referred to as media relations. So for a nonprofit, what I would do is I would start by reaching out to your local paper and introducing yourself. Um, let them know who you are. Let them know what you do. Um, and what you really want to do is to become a source for the media. Uh, you want to build a relationship with the local media so that they come to you when they're working on a story and they say, hey, 
I, I'm working on this story. Can you speak to me? Can I interview about this? Or do you know someone that I can talk to? You really want to become a resource. Um, I mm-hmm. think it's important to read the local paper or the papers daily, um, you know, mm-hmm. watch the news on TV, listen on our radio stations, know what they're talking about and what they're covering. Um, is there a reporter that's writing about your neighborhood or something your nonprofit focuses on? Reach out to them. Again, introduce yourself. Um, is there an article in the Chicago Tribune or the Sun-Times or Cranes that you can respond to with a new opinion, um, which – that's basically called a letter to the editor or an op-ed, um, and it's basically a response piece to something that's already published. Um, but I think really you need to take a step back and try to think um, as much as you can uh, what makes a story newsworthy. How do a producer think? How does a reporter think? Um, because they're usually pitching someone else as well. So what do you see in the news? What makes a story a story? What do you like to read? Um, and then think about do you have something that's newsworthy to share? Is there a big com- event coming up that you can make newsworthy? So a lot of times reporters will tell you, we don't cover events anymore because there's so many events. So how can you make that event, um, how can you make it newsworthy? Is there someone attending that is really of interest to the media? Um, are the proceeds going somewhere that's really great? Is there an underlying story behind it with community members coming together and doing something to really make that neighborhood better? Um, there's usually always a story, but sometimes it takes a little bit of digging to find that story and find the right reporter mm-hmm. to cover that story. Um mm-hmm. You know, are you are you launching a new initiative? Is there a new project or program you're working on? Uh, a lot of times there might be a larger story or trend in the news that you can tie into. Um, you know, what what are they covering? Is there is there something that you're doing that is a new perspective that you can um maybe get a follow up story on? I also think, you know, DNA Info Chicago is a good place to start as they have reporters in many Chicago neighborhoods and they're always mm-hmm. looking for local neighborhood stories. Um, they're looking to tell those stories. So I would say start there for nonprofits. Um, mm-hmm. I work with them often, okay. and they're very receptive to getting new story ideas. Um, mm-hmm. And start building that relationship with that reporter. You know, pitch them a story. You're you're going to get no's, but don't give up. Keep trying. You have to be proactive, and you have to be persistent. Okay. And, and then I guess that brings a good uh, segue into social media because I was about to say, Hey, you know, if they don't cover you, you, you make your own news. So, yep. so we could talk about social media. What are some of the effective strategies that you can use? But most importantly, how do you uh, connect the social media strategy with fundraising? How do you connect with donors and build relationships so that you can ultimately improve your fundraising by having a strong social media strategy? Right, and I think that's always good to keep in mind. Um I think the big thing with social media, it is, it's 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 in real time, and a lot of people now get their news and information on social media. So it's a really important part of your communications plan, and think of it as just another way to reach your audiences, to engage with your audiences, to share your message. Um, it's not – you can't just be on social media. You have to be active on social media. So if okay. you have a Twitter account, you need to be using that Twitter account. Um, you need to be checking it. Uh, same with Facebook, same with Instagram, Google+, LinkedIn, wherever you are. Um, I would recommend following your funders and donors or even potential mm-hmm. funders and donors that you want to get out in front of on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook. Engage with them. Retweet and like their posts. Comment. Like their Facebook page. Share their posts. Um, engagement is really key. I would recommend for um, nonprofits, if you're not on social media at all, to pick one social media channel and really start there um, and start to grow Mm -hmm. that channel and get comfortable there first. Post at least once a day. Be active. Um, And try to have a strategy in place. You know, what what do you want your end goals to be? Do you want to get uh, a new funder out of this opportunity? Do you want to grow your numbers, engagement? Um, Do you want people to volunteer? Kind of think about what it is that you want to get out of this. Uh, There's tons of free social media tools. uh, So you're really Mm -hmm. able to monitor your progress and your growth. A lot of them are built into Twitter and Facebook and um, the social media channels you're using, but there's also some free ones like TweetDeck and HootSuite that really help you um, basically manage your posts for the week and uh, makes it a little bit easier if you have a leaner staff and you don't have a lot of time to spend on social media. But uh, I mm-hmm. would say that your funders and donors are on social media, and, and you should be too. You should be sharing your messages. You should be sharing your news, your events, your programs, projects, initiatives, Whatever you have going on at your nonprofit that you want others to know about, you should be sharing that mm-hmm. via social media. Hmm. 
that, that's really good advice because, you know, people in my age range, you know, I'm, I'm on the tail end of the baby boomers, you know, so, so we tend to not use social media as much. And, you know, I'm probably abnormal. You know, I, I use it a lot, but a lot of people in that age range tend to look at social media as just that, a social tool, and they don't mm-hmm. really think about it or we don't think about it as, you know, something that we can use for business, fundraising, or nonprofit management. Exactly. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Exactly. So, That's exactly right. Yeah. So um, I know we're past the 20-minute mark. Um, if folks have any questions, feel free to call in or um, chat if you're in a chat room. The call-in number is 347-884-8121. Again, um, that number is 347-884-8121. We're speaking with Ashley Whalen. She is a communications officer with LISC Chicago, and she's giving us some really, really great information. And, you know, you better value this because I, I've spent <laughs> over $100 <laughs> for, for one workshop. <laughs> And you get quite as much information that that we're getting today for free within a, a very short period of time. So again, I I thank you for that. Um, so I know you touched on it before, but can you expound on some of the strategies that nonprofits can use to actually cultivate the media? I, I know you said call in and introduce yourself. Oh, and before you do that, since you kind of touched on it, there is a caller. Okay. Um, I want to see um, what this caller is. So we have a caller whose phone number is 773-801-1790. Would you care to introduce yourself? And if you have comments, would you share? Hey, good afternoon, ladies. This is Terrence Harrington. Hey, Terrence. How are you? I'm well. I'm enjoying the show. Ashley, awesome. thank you so much for Ashley, thank you so much for, you know, providing that great insight, you know, for the nonprofit community. Of now, course, of thanks things, for listening. One of the, one of the questions that I have is, you know, we we talk about social media, we talk about, you know, reaching out to the media. How mm-hmm. much time is involved with with actually uh how much should a nonprofit, especially specifically a smaller nonprofit, how much time should they spend and dedicate to social media and reaching out to the media? That's a great question. Um, I think social media, you need to be on daily and you need to check daily. Um, I know that for some people, what works best for the smaller nonprofits is on their commute in. Let's say they're on the bus or the train, getting on, checking, answering everything um, before they even get to work, and then maybe spending 10, 15, 20 minutes midday to go back on, revisit, post something, answer anything that's on there. Um, And then maybe if you have time on your commute home, check one more time. Um, and make sure that you're responding and, and, you know, you're engaging and you're putting out your messages. But I think social media is a daily thing. For the media, I would say reach out when you have something that's newsworthy, um, but you also want to you wanna keep in touch with those that you have relationships with. So you don't always want to go to them just when you have a story or you want them to cover something. It's good sometimes to just check in and say, hey, I read your story last week. It was really great. This is what I thought about it. Or, hey, what are you working on? You know, look forward to reading your next story. Um, because it really is a relationship that you're trying to build, and, and they appreciate that. You don't want to bother them every single time with saying, cover this, cover this, because eventually they'll just stop mm-hmm. covering it. Um, you, want to, you want to build a relationship. Awesome, awesome. One more question before before I jump off. Now, wait before you well, before you ask your question, Terrence, tell everybody where you're from. Well, uh, Valerie and I we we go we go way back, <laughs> you know, as far as working in the nonprofit <laughs> arena. Uh, I, I started a nonprofit organization called Nonprofits Matter, uh-huh. and basically what mm-hmm. we do we help smaller nonprofits build their communication skills and and shape their stories. And so that was one of the, the other questions that I wanted to ask Ashley is how should a smaller nonprofit begin to shape their story, specifically on social media? Yeah, well, I think, you know, whatever your messages are, what you're what you're doing, if you have events coming up, to be sharing that and posting that on social media. If you have a newsletter, that's a great way to get it out to people. A website, keeping that updated um, with new stories, new things that you're doing. Communications is a really big part, I think, of – 
all businesses, organizations, nonprofits. Because if you're not communicating, then no one knows what you're doing. Um, and you have to think about all of your audiences and how they are getting to you. How do they know about you? Um, what are they reading? How are they finding you? And that's really kind of where I start when thinking about my communications initiatives and my plan for the month or the year or three months. Um, and it changes because the the landscape changes. If you know you work with the media, you know that the reporter you were working with last week, they might not be there in a month. Um, and, and that's just the way it is. And I think it's really just important to really stay uh, up to speed on all of that. And if the media is not covering your story, you can get it out there through your website, through social media, through newsletters, blogs. There's tons of different ways to communicate what you want to communicate for free and not tons of time. Awesome. Thank you so much for, you know, spending the time this afternoon with Valerie. Both of you all are both of you all are doing great work, and I'm going to I'm going to jump off and continue to listen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you for sharing, parents. Are you welcome? Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Now we've got another question from Marcus Tab or Reverend Marcus Tab. He asked, um, "Is there any data that speaks to the effectiveness of email blasts?" or using communication services that sell e-blast time? So um, what we use for e-blast, we've, we've used a couple different things, and I do think e-blast can be effective because it's easy um, to get out whatever it is you're communicating to your audience um, with one kind of blast that looks nice. Um, we've used Mad Mimi and MailChimp, um, and mm-hmm. both of them, depending on how big your lists are, um, they do offer free services for nonprofit or very low cost services. And I would say MailChimp is a little bit easier to use and you have some more capabilities, but Mad Mimi works just fine. There's also constant contact. There's a lot of different um, things that you can use. And what I like about mm-hmm. that is when you send something out, so let's say it's an invite to a dinner or event or something you're hosting or maybe just um, an update on what's going on, you can see how many people opened it, how many people clicked on any of the links, and you can really measure um, what people are doing with your news. Are they reading it? Are they opening it? Are they putting, Is it going into spam? And so I think those mm-hmm. are effective tools to use when you're communicating. Mm-hmm. So once you use the once you read those data, it helps you to tweak your message if it's not as effective. As absolutely. Like as mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. That's good. So, what is news, and you know, what are some of the best ways to get the stories placed? I, I know you touched on it a little bit, but you know, I I might think that my little event is is newsworthy, and they should be in China. And then go to the newsroom and look at it like, yeah, right. Put it in a circular file. But but really, um, not just events, but how do you really make news? Gosh, well, that's also a good question. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's it's thinking about what it is that you think is news and then trying to think about Mm -hmm. how would you read this in the newspaper, what would the headline be? And that's really where I start. What would be the catchy mm-hmm. thing that would get the general public's attention? So why would the general public care? Because that's the thing. When when you get something in the in the newspaper or on TV or you get a radio hit, um, it you really are talking to the general public, not just your audience. So a lot of times when reporters and editors and producers are looking for the news, they're looking – for something, a story that's going to reach a lot of people and be of interest to a lot of people. So that's really how you have to think about it. And I would say start. What's the headline? What do you? What is your? Mm-hmm. What is your news? And start there, and then kind of create your pitch. Um, I think that you know news comes in various forms. We have so many newspapers. We have websites, blogs, radio, TV. Um, think about where you want to get your news, and. There are so many outlets to reach out to. Again, it takes time and persistence and patience, but, you know, just keep working at it. Build those relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, the Really, the best way to get stories placed is to have something newsworthy to share and to build that relationship mm-hmm. with the media. Okay, and it has to really stand out, right? It, it can't be something that everybody else is doing, or it has to be what a, a new spin on something. That there has to be some... Doing. Yeah, there has to be some sort of hook. Um, I will say, you know, sometimes with the Chicago Neighborhood Development Awards, uh, 
you know, that's something that has been going on for 22 years. So how do we make it new each year? How do we make the media interest each year? Um, I take a look at our winners and what's new. Is there anyone that's coming to our event that, you know, the media really cares about? Um, Why is this important? And what I kind of landed on this year is, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff that we read in the news every day, and that's only half the story. There's a lot of great things going on in our neighborhoods that are not being told. Mm-hmm. And so that was really mm-hmm. my hook this year is let's tell some of the good things. Let's share some of the good news, some of the good projects, the people that are working in these neighborhoods every single day to make a difference. Let's share some of the good stuff. And I think right now that's a good hook because – it does need to be more balanced and there are good mm-hmm. things going on in our neighborhoods and we need to share those things with the media and ask them to cover it. And the worst they can say is no, and they will say no, but you got to just keep trying and keep, you know, keep pushing right. your news and eventually they'll say yes. Right. So on that note, can you share the major elements of a press release? So if I were picking a story, mm-hmm. what's the go in my press release and what are some of the do's and don'ts of writing the press release? Well, I would only write a press release when you have something newsworthy that you want to share with multiple news outlets. So uh, mm-hmm. an event or a new initiative, a new program, project. Um, we did write a, a press release for CNDA um, because that was the easiest way to announce all of the winners and have everything mm-hmm. in one in one document. Um, mm-hmm. If you don't have something like that, I would recommend personalizing your pitch and finding the right reporter for that pitch. Um, but mm-hmm. press releases, they typically follow the who, what, where, and why format. So, you know, who is telling the news, what is the news, where is this news, and why is it important? Um, mm-hmm. They also usually have a quote or two from the executive director, maybe someone in the neighborhood that's affected by, affected by this news. Um, the shorter, the better. And, mm-hmm. again, don't waste your time writing a press release if, if there's not news. It's If there's not mm-hmm. news, don't write a press release. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And it sounds like it would be like a lady skirt, long enough to cover the subject, short enough to be interesting. <laughs> exactly. That's a great way to think of it. <laughs> and then, you know, when we look at the news today, I mean, there's a lot of bad news. And then when we look at what's happening with nonprofits, you know, occasionally nonprofits find themselves in the center of controversy, you know, for example, an executive director may have been found embezzling or a child may have, you know, gotten hurt during an after school program and, you know, this makes, you know, really big news and the news just seems to not want to go away. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the steps that, you know, organizations can do if they find themselves in these situations to restore public trust and communicate that in the media? Yeah, this is really important. Um so this is crisis communications and i think if there's a controversy trying to get out in front of it and to be as prepared as possible is the best way to go about it um if it's mm-hmm. totally unexpected when you find out about the controversy or the crisis i think immediately you need to gather those that need to know about what's going on and you need to get all mm-hmm. the facts and figure out a plan, what you need to say and what you're going to do moving forward. Um, Mm -hmm. Oftentimes you might consider writing and releasing a statement. Um, That's a way to get your message out on the situation. I would also Mm -hmm. recommend identifying a spokesperson. Um, This should be the person and the only person that publicly comments on the situation because if you have Mm -hmm. multiple people commenting um, on a crisis or controversy, a lot of times the messaging will get mixed up. So pick one person Mm -hmm. And have that person be the public kind of face of the situation. Um, Mm -hmm. I think it's important to reach out to your board and your key funders um, so that you inform them and they hear from you before they hear about it elsewhere, if possible. Um, It's important to keep them informed and to really stay ahead of the situation as much as you can. I think... Mm -hmm. um, You need to make sure that all key parties, your staff, your board, uh, your funders, they know the key messages and what is okay and what is not okay to say. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's why, again, it's good to have one person as a spokesperson publicly. Um, Mm -hmm. And then really always be truthful. Things are going to happen, but I think if you're honest Mm -hmm. and you're proactive, you're responsive and cooperative during a crisis, you will get through it and you'll come out on the other side and it it will be okay. Mm -hmm. And then people, I think, they respect you more, you know, when Absolutely. you're up front. Yes. Yes, I agree. Okay. I agree. All right. All right. I know we've passed our time. I'm just really 
I'm really enjoying the show. I want to open it up one more time in the event that there is someone listening who may have questions or if you're in the chat room, if you have questions, uh, again, our call-in number is 347-884-8121. And we are speaking with Ashley Whalen. She is the communications officer for LIST. And again, she's giving us you know, really great information. Okay, it doesn't seem as though we have any more questions. Um, no, I, I don't see any. Oh, okay, it looks as if Marcus may have one more question. Oh, his comment is thank you very much. <laughs> he really appreciates um, the time you took, it, and so do I. Of course. Okay. <laughs> Great. So we've come to the end of our show, and I'd like to thank Ashley Whalen. She's the communications officer for List Chicago. Thank her so much for being our guest today. Ashley, would you care to share any parting thoughts and tell us how we can reach you? Sure. Well, um, again, I think communications is a really important part for any nonprofit. I think it's important to communicate your messaging um, to your audiences. So thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed our conversation, Valerie. And it's been great talking all things communications. Um, My contact information is on List Chicago's website, which is lisc-chicago.org. LISC-Chicago.org, and you can also reach me on Twitter at Ash Chicago Six. That's at Ash Chicago Six. Okay, awesome. So I want to thank our listening audience for listening to Nonprofit U Blog Radio Talk Show today. The talk show will be available for download within about an hour. And be sure to tune in next week when our guest will be Delia Coleman. She's the Vice President of Strategy and Policy for Forefront. And Forefront, as you may know, is formerly known as Donors Forum. And we will be discussing Forefront's new diversity and inclusion initiative. So I'm looking forward to another lively discussion next week. So until then, um, take care of the nonprofit and you. Take care, and thanks again, Ashley. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers! Pizza! Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is, we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to MetroPCS. Stop by MetroPCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. MetroPCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require port and of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers! Pizza! Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is, we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to MetroPCS. Stop by MetroPCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. MetroPCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require port and of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions.